Hey guys, Tactical Minds here. And uh, today we want to talk about um, what to do when the uh, power goes out. Um, power could go out for, uh, you know, many reasons. Um, obviously with things going on between, you know, Russia and Ukraine, us possibly on the brink of war, um, you know, there's a lot of concerns about a lot of things, um, you know, nuclear war and other talks. Personally, my opinion is power is one of the biggest things, right? As humans, we're so, uh, you know, adapted to living with our phones and our power and all that stuff for, you know, a long time, right? Shut the lights off, give it about a week, and we'll start to kill each other off, I promise. That's just the way stuff goes. Um, so before we get into the video, um, you know, as always, please like, comment, share, with your friends, subscribe, hit bell for all notifications, all that good stuff. And to all the new subscribers, thank you for joining. Um, so let's get started. So the picture you see here in the background is from New York in 2019. It was a blackout that occurred over about 30 blocks and uh, approximately 72,000 people were without power for a while. Now, um, the reason why I bring this up is, like I said in the beginning, right, like we you know, we're obviously concerned with all the stuff going on, right? There's food shortages and all that stuff for other videos, whatever. But we're obviously concerned with all the stuff going on, you know, what's going to happen. But most people don't even stop and think just on a day to day, you could be going about your day going about your evening and a storm comes through uh, solar flare, anything can really disrupt the electronic grid. It's, it's pretty sensitive. Um, and then the power goes out. Now the power could go out from few hours to a few days to a few weeks to a few months to who knows how long right so when the power goes out me personally i think there's five things we need to worry about right we need to worry about first thing first we have to address the issue that obviously the power's out right so we need to be able to see because now we're in the dark right second issue is um heat um uh, even in the hottest of climates, um, when the sun goes down at night, it can get pretty cold and hypothermia can set in pretty quick. So we've got to worry about that. Third thing, food. Fourth thing, water. I'm not putting those in importance. Water would obviously be over food. Um, but food, water, and depending on how long uh, the blackout lasts for, um, the fifth thing that I would say is the biggest worry is going to be people. And by people, I mean your rioters, I mean your looters, I mean your people that are rummaging from home to home, uh, looking for things that they've run out of or that they don't have, right? So obviously, operational security is going to be a big deal in something like that. Um, you know, when we talk about food, water, and stuff like that, um, you know, good thing to remember is the rule of threes. Right. So in survival, the rule of three says you can go three minutes without oxygen. You can go about three hours without uh, some type of shelter or something like that in very harsh conditions. You can go three days without food or no, three weeks without food, excuse me, three days without water. Right. So anyway, so addressing the issues. Right. Let's address the core issue first. What we're going to do when the light goes out. Right. So obviously, um, Everybody should have some lanterns, uh, some candles. You guys have seen me show these in the video before, these uh, Yukio candles. This little candle will burn for approximately nine hours, um, and they're really good to have. Um, there's other candles, other lanterns, you know. Doesn't matter what you have, just have something. Even the little tea lights, have something. Um, point of the matter is, know where that stuff is in your home, okay? Know where that stuff is in your home. Know the layout of your home. You know, when the lights go out, that may be the only way you're going to get to things. Personally, I have flashlights and lanterns and candles um, situated all throughout my home. So know where those things are, because when the lights go out, you may not have something to be able to get to them. Okay. So know the layout of your home. Um, and as far as light goes, another uh, thing which kind of rolls into the people um, concern is preserving your natural uh, night vision if you know possible if you need it um now i've talked about natural night vision in the videos once before i'm not going to get into the whole thing with eyes and cones and rods and all that stuff just understand humans um can naturally see uh fairly decent in the dark okay when you're in the light and you go to the dark it takes approximately eight to ten minutes for your eyes to adjust to the dark um, and what will happen is your eyes within those eight to 10 minutes will start to absorb whatever light it can find in the room, whether that be moonlight from outside a window 
whatever sources of light. Your eyes are going to absorb that and they're going to adjust. That's when your natural night vision occurs, right? Not like looking through night vision goggles, but your natural night vision. Um, when we talk about maintaining that, um, you know, we want to try to use things. If we are using lanterns, I would recommend using something like a soft red light or a soft green light. Um, these are lights that do not kill your night vision uh, nearly as fast as a white light. That's why military NVGs are in green. Um, and that's why Navy ships at night, we keep the light in, uh, or we keep a low red light on, okay? Um, but anyway, that's another topic. So just to have some source of light. And again, you know, know the layout of your home. Again, when it comes to people, um, you know, if you have any weapons in the home, um, know where those weapons are, know how to be able to access them, know how to get to them in the dark, you know, have things pre-planned and staged. Most people don't plan for something to happen because they just assume nothing's ever going to happen, right? But I promise you, you know, the way I've always lived my life is, you know, hope for the best, but be prepared for the worst, right? Because when it does happen, you don't want to be caught without your pants down or with your pants down, excuse me, literally, right? All right. So let's address the second thing, um, heat. All right, heat. So it's going to be kind of tough depending on what climate you live in and depending on, like I said, you know, how cold it's going to get in the evening hours or maybe in the day hours, maybe it's during the winter. Um, and a winter storm has knocked out the power. So there's a couple of things we can do, right? First, we want to insulate the home overall, right? By that, I mean any doors, any cracks, any crevices, like so any windows, any windows, we can go ahead and if we had some caulk or something like that, seal those windows up, right? To make sure no airflow is getting through. If you didn't, um, you can use things as simple as clothes, just plug them into the corners of the windows and seal that airflow off from coming into the house, okay? We're trying to keep cold air from coming in and preserve all our body heat inside the home. Um, door cracks, right? Underneath the door, there's usually underneath everybody's door, there's good types of seals, even the doors in your house, not just the door coming into your home, right? There's little seals under the doors, there's little lips, there's usually a little gap, right? And that's where a lot of the heat escapes, that's where a lot of the air goes through, right? So we take, again, things like towels, clothes, shove them up under those doors, maybe old packages that we had, a lot of them come with those foam paddings, right? Take those foam paddings, whatever you can, shove it into those cracks and crevices, you're trying to keep any of the cold air from getting in. Now, once we've insulated the home, as far as where we're going to sleep for the evening or where's going to be the best place to go, we're going to want to insulate one room, especially if you have a family, okay? If you have a family and you have one room in the house where your family can fit, we want to go into that room. We want to insulate that room with blankets. Um, again, cover up those cracks in the doors, you know, stuff like that. We want to keep this one room as warm as possible. It's a lot easier to keep one room warm than it is to keep the entire house home warm, okay? Maintaining the body temperature at one room, if you've got a family of two, three, four, five people, it's going to get warmer in that room a lot faster, okay? And again, with candles and things like that, um, using my emergency blanket technique with the candle, you know, and the blanket wrapped around you, like I told you in another video, um, that's another way to go. But, um, you know, we want to keep that that way. Uh, my personal opinion, I think everybody should have at least a couple of sleeping bags in their home for cold temperatures. Um, and I think everyone should have at least a tent. Um, if you could pinch a tent inside one room and have some sleeping bags in there, you could keep fairly comfortably warm um, throughout the night. And um, as far as sleeping bags go, you know, if you look on military surplus stores and stuff online, you can a lot of times find these military sleep systems a lot cheaper than they used to be. And these are sleep systems that, um, you know, soldiers used to sleep up in the mountains when it's, you know, icy cold conditions out. So they would work very well in the home. Um, and obviously with maintaining body heat, we, you know, we're going to want to stay dry as well. You know, uh, we talked about that in another video. So anyway, so now that we've got the heat issue kind of addressed, let's address the uh, food and water issue. Okay, water, obviously you're going to have hopefully some left in the pipes, right? There's other ways you can get water um, from the back of the tank in your toilet, um, water from your hot water heater. There's there's ways you can get water. There's lots of ways you can get water, at least in the first few days, okay? That being said, you're going to probably want to go ahead and purify that water, right? And by purifying it, you know, have some type of filtration system or best case scenario, being able to boil it. Um, there's lots of different ways to go about doing that. Um, obviously, now, if the power's out, right, our stoves are probably not going to go on because the gas is probably going to be out. And if you have an electric stove, obviously, that's not going to work either, right? Uh, obviously, you don't want to start a fire in your home because if you start a fire in your home, 
probably going to catch your home on fire. It's a pretty dangerous thing to do. Now, one neat thing you can do is you can have a couple of these called ESPIT stoves. Now, these things are not expensive to get. Okay, you can see it's a very small package. You can fit this in your pocket. Opens up just like this, right? It can adjust any way, and you just rest your pot right on top of it. These little hexamine tablets that it comes with here, okay? Take some of these out. These little tablets, they smell like shit, but they will hold a fire for a good 30 minutes. So you put a good three or four tablets in there, you get them going, you get a nice little fire going, put your pot on top of it, you can boil water or you know heat up your food if need be. Um, so that's some things you can do as far as water is concerned. Um, as far as food, now, a lot of people do have a lot of freeze-dried food in their home, okay? They store up freeze-dried food because it lasts, you know, 20 years. That's, that's great, okay? Um, again, I'll go into that in another video about my personal opinions on that. But, you know, they have all this freeze-dried food, and that's great. But if you're in a situation where you have a few days that you have to preserve the water you have, because remember, three weeks without food, three days without water. So if you're in a situation where you need water the most, well, that freeze-dry food needs water to rehydrate it, to reconstitute it, right? Um, personally, I wouldn't want to waste my water on reconstituting food. So my personal recommendation, which is a lot cheaper, is go to the store or go online and buy yourself canned food in bulk. Um, even though it has a shorter expiration date, believe me, that expiration date is more of just a suggestion that food lasts a lot longer um, than that. Okay, so and canned food, guess what? Doesn't need water to reconstitute it. Doesn't really need to be heated. Now you can heat it if you want to make the meal better, but it doesn't need to be heated. My point is it, 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 it can feed you and not have to waste your water resources. So in my opinion, having all that freeze dried food, again, is great for a long term, you know, overhaul, but you do need water to reconstitute it. And you're going to go through your water with that, right? Um, so the last thing is uh, people right? Like I said, operational security, right? Hopefully you have some type of weapons in the home or something that you know how to get to and use if necessary. Now going into that, um, we're also going to dive real quick back into what I said about insulating the home, right? So insulating the home and covering up those cracks and crevices into your doors, right? If you have sliding glass doors, um, put blankets, um, you know, over them um, at night to not allow people to see in. Now, during the day, that's up to you if you want to allow the day the sun get in. I personally would leave the blankets up there to allow people to not see in. Like I said, depending on how long this thing goes, um, you don't want people to know your home. Now, people may naturally come to the home because they're going to be scrounging around looking for stuff anyway, right? But you don't want them to know where you are in your home. Again, we always say put ourselves in the mind of the bad guy, right? If you're somebody and you're trying to get into somebody else's home, we use this in military and law enforcement all the time, right? We have human intelligence, electronic intelligence, um, sensors, things like this that we can send into somebody's home because guess what? We want to know the layout of the home. And more importantly, we want to know where the people are in that home, where our adversaries are, where maybe civilians might be, stuff like that, right? If I know the layout of your home and I know where you are, I know where to go to gain the advantage and I know where to go to not, right? Um, one of the advantages you have in your home is that you should know your home better than anybody. But um, even those little cracks under the door, there's ways people can get under there and see. And I'm not going to go into how many ways they can, but trust me, there's ways people can get under there and see. They can listen, um, try to listen for your sound signature, listen to where you and your family are located in the home. Again, looking through windows, sliding glass doors, things like this. The, the, the point is you don't want people to be able to see in your home, okay? You don't want them to know where you're at so that they know where to plan their attack from or they know how to try and get into the home and maybe think about getting out and get what they need without disrupting you. Um, so consider that. Um, and, and, you know, operational security goes into a whole uh, bunch more stuff than that. But those are just kind of the basics, guys, of what to do when the power goes out. Like I said, um, you know, always, you know, plan for the worst, hope for the best, be prepared. All right. Hope you guys got something out of today's video. Um, thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay tactical, stay dangerous. Hopefully keep the lights on. Right. Have a good day.